hello YouTube. Alright, someone in my comments actually uh, noted that he had the same ThinkPad. Well, let's take a look at this thing. <clears throat> First of all, it's a ThinkPad A21E. It has the nub, which I like much better than trackpads, because trackpads are just terrible compared to these, I think. See, it was designed to run Windows 98 and 2000. There should be a Celeron sticker right there where somebody ripped it off. <laughs> so, yes, this thing has a Celeron processor. It is a 600 megahertz Celeron processor, and it's maxed out at 256 uh, megabytes of RAM. Yeah, this is an old, old, old so, um, ThinkPad. Now, I, when I got this laptop, it came with this. An actual LAN card, because the one in the back doesn't work. I decided to put this one in instead. A Linksys wireless G card. And it works. I have installed Ubuntu 9.10 uh, version of Linux on here. And it runs beautifully. I replaced the hard drive, too. This is the original hard drive, which is not Western Digital. It's a Fujitsu, and it was an, and it was a 6.2 gigabyte hard drive. Very small and loud too, by the way. So I put a brand new Western Digital 80 gig drive in here, and it's not only is the system faster, but it's quieter. <coughs> <coughs> so <clears throat> let's start this up. Boom, there you go, Ubuntu. <clears throat> now you can see it doesn't start up the fastest, but it doesn't start up too slowly either. See, look at this. You're watching a 600 megahertz Celeron with 256 megs of RAM and a 540, or 5400 5, RPM 8 gig drive. New boot up screen is nice. All right, I'll log in. <clears throat> and watch it start up. Yeah, you hear the sound lag there, that's the processor. And boom, it runs Ubuntu. <clears throat> Just fine, really. It, it's not good for... <clears throat> not very good for YouTube playback, because the when the video quality starts to go up, the uh, it lags big time because of the Celeron processor. But as you can see, the wireless card works under Ubuntu with NDIS wrapper and the Windows drivers. And <clears throat> let's take a look at the keyboard. It's your typical IBM keyboard. I love these IBM keyboards. They're very nice. And of course, up here we have the sound. And this it's, this thing is old enough to have the sound controlled by the BIOS, which is really different. I've never seen that before. <clears throat> but so is the brightness and the keyboard light. Now, let me show you the keyboard light. You press the function key and then the page up key. And this little light up here turns on, illuminating the keyboard. You can see the reflection in the keys here, which is really nice for the dark. And of course, you hit the buttons for the brightness, and you know, it controls the brightness, <clears throat> obviously. But yeah, it's a fully functioning revived laptop now. From this, from about this, uh, bleh, this is from the year 2000. It came with Windows 2000. And yeah, with a new hard drive, the new hard drive has made this thing unbelievably faster. Which is the weird part about it. And you know, let's open a menu. See, it, it doesn't 
it doesn't actually lag doing that, and you can load all this stuff. It, it's 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 really impressive, actually. Yeah, I can use Open Office and all that stuff, and I even have Wine installed on here. But let's take a, and that just shows it it can run <clears throat> at a pretty decent speed with Linux. Boom! It it'll do that for a second, and it'll boom. Boom, boom, boom. Now it's off. I might add that the sound <clears throat> is pretty bad. This speaker rattles a lot, which is kind of annoying. So if you turn it up, can't turn it up too loud. But yeah, it's a fully functioning ThinkPad. Let's take a look at the actual computer itself. Look at the side. Of course, we have a floppy drive. Oh yes, we have a floppy drive. And there's the sound inputs and outputs. There's uh, headphones, line in, and microphone, which you don't typically see. You usually see two ports nowadays. So that was a bit different. There is where the hard drive sits. Little tray goes around two screws on the uh, hard drive itself. Let's unplug it. Here's the back. We have the Kensington lock. A printer parallel port, phone line jack for the 56k modem, and the Ethernet port that does not work. The fan. There's a serial port and a VGA port. And the VGA port is awesome because you can still use that. It has a USB 1.1 connection, a PS slash 2 slot, and of course the power. So as you can see, it's pretty limited. Here we have one uh, PC card slot with the wireless card in it. And we have the CD drive. Not a DVD drive, a CD drive. It's a 24 times read speed CD drive. Probably came stock with a machine. And you can actually remove it by uh, moving that lever back and doing a couple things. Now let's look at the bottom. Of course, here we have. It has some nice feet. This these ThinkPads used to have docks, which is what this port is for. And there you go. It has all the IBM information. That's where the battery would go. But I don't. I've left the battery out of the system just because there's no point in having a battery that lasts about 15 minutes <laughs> sitting in there, fully charged, doing absolutely nothing, just shortening its life even more. Under this panel is the uh, 56K modem module. Under this panel is the RAM. And you can see by this uh, label here that it's Windows 2000 Professional. I just dropped a water bottle. Right. Turn it back over. And there you go. That's a glimpse at a laptop from the year 2000. Uh... I might make more specific videos on it later, if you guys want me to, but that's just a little blast from the past, I guess. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.